Okay, uh, uh, welcome everybody. We're happy to have you in Tian, who will tell us about the center of monoidal two categories and three plus one D digraph witten theory. Okay, uh, thank Josh for inviting me. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to talk here. So this is, uh, my title is the center of monoidal two categories in uh, three plus one D digraph witten theory. This is joint work with uh, Kong Liang and Zhou Shan. So my talk will uh, have two parts, uh, four parts, sorry. So the first one will be the introduction and the, the main result. And the second will state the, basically the definition of the center of monoidal two categories. And the third part will be a explicit computation of the, the center, the Dreamfield center for the Dagger witten theory. And the, 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 the last part will study the, the will discuss the, the properties of this Dreamfield center, okay? So, uh, so let me first let's say some uh, motivation of studying this uh, problem. So uh, on the mathematical physics side, uh, there is a three plus one D topological order. Uh, the notion is invented by Lang, Kong, and Wen. So basically they said they want some uh, monoidal two category called two WAC G omega. I'm gonna uh, state the, the, the concrete definition of this two category. It's basically a G graded two vector spaces, okay? So this uh, two category is uh, describes a certain uh, two plus one D topological order, and is is a bulk or is anomaly, or is a Dreamfield center is a three plus one D topological order, mathematically described by the Dreamfield center of the monoidal two category. Okay, so uh, this is a three plus one D theory, and I'm gonna state that the 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 lower dimensional analog, I mean the two plus one D diagonal witten theory in the next slides. So in this two category, uh, there, there are three uh, layer of uh, structures. The object of this uh, two category uh, correspond to the string-like uh, topological excitations and one morphism correspond to the particle-like topological excitations and two morphisms uh, describe the instantons in the topological order. So for instance, uh, they predict or they compute the particle-like excitations namely the endomorphism of the unit in this category is, I mean, in this two category, this endomorphism of one category is gonna be some, some, some uh, symmetric monoidal category. Uh, they show that the endomorphism is equivalent to the rep G, okay? It's the, 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 the symmetric category of the representations of G, uh, where G is a, a certain finite group, okay? So on the mathematical side, uh, we want to understand that the notion of uh, fusion two categories and even more like a modular tensor two categories. So as you know, the, 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 uh, if you start from the 3D uh, topological field theory is more or less correspond to a modular tensor one category. So, I mean, one approach to 4D theory, 4D topological field theory is to study the monoidal tensor two category. So that's one of the mathematical background for this, for studying this problem. Uh, and for the fusion two category, there is a, a paper by Douglas and the Reuter. They define the notion of the fusion two category and uh, somehow the, the, the topological excitations in two plus one D topological order, they should form a modular tensor uh, one category as I said before, and the higher dimensional analog, i.e. the three plus one D analog should uh, form a modular tensor two category. And then, so one way to get a modular tensor two category is to start from a, a tensor two category and then take the, the Dreamfield center. So I really view this Dreamfield center as a toy model or the simplest model of a modular tensor two category. So that's my, my mathematical reason to study this problem. And once you have this modular tensor two category, you can apply the factorization homology uh, and then to get a uh, 4D TQFT and uh, eventually to get the invariant of four manifolds, okay? So this is the mathematical background. And the first part is the, 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 the mathematical physics uh, background, okay? So now let me state the, the classical two plus one D dagger witten theory. So uh, mathematically, this theory can be described as the so-called the twisted Dreamfield double of a finite group. So namely the, the uh, and in particular, the, the point-like uh, topological excitation in the two plus one D Dagger witten theory is described by the, the 
Greenfield Center of the one-wack G chi, where the one-wack G chi is the monoidal one category of G graded finite dimensional vector spaces twisted by certain uh, three cocycles. Okay, and the ground field K is is to be the co complex number in the in this talk. So, <clears throat> so this is the the classical two plus one D diagonal Witten theory, and um, there is a classical theory for, for computing the Dreamfield center, the Dreamfield center of this one wack G chi. So let me give the, the, the following formulation due to Willerton. So let uh, CL denote the set of conjugate class of the finite group G, let CGH denote the centralizer of H inside G. And there is so-called the, the, the transgression map uh, tau of H uh, from uh, the, the K plus one, Co-cycle of G to the K co-cycle of CGH, and then the the description of the Dreamfield center due to Willerton is that there is a equivalence of one categories of the Dreamfield center of one vector G as to the direct sum of the conjugate class of one rep CGH tau H chi. Okay. So Here the the can, can they, um, I guess I'd like to just maybe get some more intuitive idea. I don't know if you're gonna draw pictures, but for instance, so for closed, if you take a closed manifold, a closed three manifold, right? You can yes. count the number of homomorphisms from by one of the manifold into G. Right. And is the invariant, is the GW invariant of that manifold would be some count, some kind of count of the number of homomorphisms with some weights. So if you take a you mean for this a two you mean for this two plus one dagger we not say for two plus one but maybe some some was going to be done in any dimension are you is it some appropriate count of number of homomorphisms from pi one of the manifold into into the group g i mean if the co cycle is trivial then yeah, that's let's, true let's say the co cycle is trivial then right 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 i mean i mean for the for the two plus one d dagger written it is true but then is it you just count the number of homomorphisms or up to conjugation or what? Up to conjugation, yes. Up to and that is just the invariant of the closed three manifold is the number yes. of homomorphisms up to conjugation. Right, right. This right. can define, an, I mean, in any dimension, right, to have invariant that to an n manifold, close and manifold assigns the number of, um, number of. You mean the pi one into, into some. The number of, yeah, homes from pi one into g. Um, but then, what um, is it easy to describe the state space assigned to the boundary, or to the surface? I mean, for the surface, I think uh, you take the. It's gonna be what the 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 space of the the flat connections over the surface. Of the so principal G bundle. So, 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 but this is just this is again the conjugacy classes of homomorphisms from pi one of the surface to the group. That's right. That yeah, up to conjugation. Yes. So this, yes. Is this is the character the character space. variety. So you will just take the vector space with the basis homomorphisms of pi one. That's right. That's right. Up to conjugation, and that's and I mean I could even ask about one plus one dimensional theory, right? Because what the this case. Yes. Makes sense. So again, you're saying you're taking trivial cycle. So you take trivial cycle. Okay. Yes. Then you have this. I guess I'm guessing you have a sphere in any dimension. Um, yes. But, but for instance, if you're doing it in one plus one d. Okay. What are, I mean, what are the twists? Or I mean, is it an interesting question? Is it easier to understand possible modifications of the sphere in one plus one dimensional case? Uh, It, that's just the, the the something called the 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 loop. I mean, it's basically the somehow the the loop realization of G. I mean, you you basically take the pi one. I mean, let's say the you want to take the evaluation on the circle, right? You take the pi one of the circle, which is Z, and mapped into yeah, some yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I guess right. so. So I guess circle circle is decorated by conjugacy by a conjugacy class of the group. Yes, 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 yes. So you, you basically get a G divided by G. I mean by the conjugate action. I mean that classifies one manifold, right? That classifies circles with decorations. Right, right, right. But you can right. look and look at cobordisms and maybe you can do some similar so it's a here you're twisting by some elements in Z3. Yes. 
Yes. We have transparency basically. Or, or, but so, let's say so in Q plus 1D, you have some kind of twists by 30 cycles. cycles. Yes. Beta cycles in G. Right, right. But in dimension two, would that be similar? Would you be, would you have twists by two ca cycles? In two dimensional, yes, yes. It's, it's basically a projective ref, uh, representation of G in some sense. I mean, if G is a billion. So even I mean, if G is a billion, right? I mean, in 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 this, I mean, this this, I think this equivalence holds in any dimensional. I suppose uh, for simplicity, G is, G is a billion, then CGH is always G, right? Yes, yes. But so let and me then, understand, so you say you're at Z, the center of, is that a one, so you have a one category of vector spaces, G graded vector spaces, or what is that, vector spaces? Right, one like G is a G graded, uh, G graded, uh, is, is a one category of a G graded uh, vector space, yes. And yes. you have the index, chi, and you have chi, chi as a superscript. You have chi as superscript. Right. This is right. Right. This is you know the twist. And so this so this is a this is a one like a G chi is a monoidal one category, where you have you have the 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 G number of the simple object, delta G. Okay. But so and so then the, the, first, the chi denotes the the associativity. But so first the first non-trivial case would be GZ two, and what's the first non-trivial case when you can have a non-trivial cycle? You mean three co-cycle? A G is zero two. You have non-trivial. A two co-cycle. Well, I, um, I guess I can ask both questions. But what if you have non-trivial co-cycle? You somehow have less freedom. You have fewer objects. What happens? No, the, uh, the you you mean in the in the in in you mean okay. in the dream field center or in the monoidal category? Yes, and both. I guess I just don't have. Uh, in the in the monoidal category, the number of the simple objects are the same. The 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 twisting cycle is just a. Uh, Twist the 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 associator. So you change I mean, the structure. So you changing the so chi changes only the tensor structure of your category. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But when but but when, but, but, but when you have non-trivial chi, I mean in general, if you take the Dreamfield center, then I guess the number of the the simple object in the Dreamfield center usually will be smaller. Smaller. And then right. but the info center is semi simple. If the original category is semi simple or or right, not. right, right. In this case, yes, the Dreamfield center is semi-simple. Yes, and you work. I mean, for for the the Dreamfield center of this one like a G is is semi-simple. I mean, in general, I don't know. But so you take a field of characteristic zero for this. Right, the field is complex number in this case. Okay. It's the most the simplest case, right? So if the input category is semi-simple, the Dreamfield sample center should be semi-simple, right? In general. Right, I mean this, but this is in the one category case, but the yeah, yeah. category, I don't yeah. know. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. Is there a, some kind of easy description of Dreamfield Center using some kind of defects on surfaces and free manifolds? Can you kind of just draw everything by hand using defect lines, etc.? You mean reconstruct the Dreamfield Center by the topological field theory in some sense? So, some kind of, some kind of, yeah, we have defects, you just add defects of various dimensions. I mean, defects is just the, the somehow the, either the boundary condition of the field theory or the or the or the integration of the this this mon, this uh, modular tensor category, right? Well, uh, um, I just I mean, what's there additional decorations? You can you have additional. Oh, you mean decorations? You, uh, uh, yeah. you mean you mean you mean you put some like object on the dots and then one more them on the lines? Yeah, you can right? do. Defects of dimension one, two, etc. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Maybe, uh, this is kind of, maybe that's kind of a separate question. Maybe you should just go. I think I'm just asking too many questions. So just go ahead. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can discuss. I mean, later after the, the yes. talk. So, so okay. So, uh, where was I? Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna restate the equivalence of these categories. So the Dreamfield center on the left hand side is uh, equivalence to the direct sum of certain like uh, representation categories, where is the one category of module over CGH, which is a finite group, but twisted with the two co-cycle. So basically you get the productive rep representation of CGH twisted by the two co-cycle, okay? So this is the state, I mean, race statement of the classical theory on the Dreamfield center for this one like G, okay? So if a chi is trivial, then you basically got the, the, the Dreamfield double of the finite group G. So, 
And then we're going to say that our main theorem, you're going to see, I mean, this is a direct uh, generalization of the previous result. We say that there is an equivalence of two categories with uh, Z of two vec G omega on the one hand. And on the other hand, I have the direct sum of uh, a, a finite set of two rep CGH tau H omega. So formally speaking, the formulation of this result is essentially the same as the previous result. You basically replace one by two everywhere, and that's basically all the thing we're doing. So if I generalize from the two two plus one d dagger written to three plus one d dagger written, so the data I start with is a finite group G, but now I have to start with a, a four cocycle omega, and then this two act G omega is something called omega twisted G graded one categories of finite dimensional vector spaces, and then we have this result. <clears throat> Are, are these two categories semi-simple in the suitable? Right, right, right. Okay, this is the next one. So these two categories, item potent complete and semi-simple in the sense of uh, Douglas and uh, Rutter. Okay. So maybe just so what's the so the simplest example of a semi-simple? So for instance, if I take the two category, um, I mean, so what, just to get a feeling for semi-simple two categories. Like if I take, for instance, category two category whose objects are semi-simple algebras, yes. uh, morphisms are bimodules of semi-simple algebras, and yes. morphisms are homes of bimodules. That's a yes. semi-simple two category. Right, right, right. I mean, if the Maybe if the ground problem. field is complex number, then it's basically right. the object just the the natural numbers, right? Somehow, the, because you have the matrix algebra. I mean, all the semi-simple algebra. Can, algebra. can you classify uh, semi-simple two categories or not? No. Okay. Uh, semi-simple two category. So I think semi-simple two category are always, uh, I mean, in, in the sense of Douglas and the Rutter, uh, their semi-simple two category is always the module category over, over fusion one category. So you'll take the, 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 the fusion one category and then you'll take the module category over this. That's uh, somehow the equivalent definition of semi-simple in, in the sense of Douglas and Root. So later on, you're gonna see a concrete example of, 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 of certain semi-simple two category, okay? So anyway, this is the, the, the main result of our, uh, our paper and the Oh, yeah, one more remark is that there is another way to rest, uh, to state this uh, Dreamfield center is you can, uh, since this Dreamfield center is, is also a semi-simple two category, you can ask the, uh, I mean, it is the module category over which algebra, right? Which monoidal category. So th this is a so-called the higher tube algebra of 2FG. This is a result due to Delcam and uh, Bullivant. So this is just another connection to the, to the, other uh, results. So the 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 property of this uh, Dreamfield center is, as I said, we start we, we want to uh, find some a toy model of modular tensor two category. So we we will briefly discuss the the so-called the celebrity center of the braided monoidal category. It's basically the higher dimensional analog of the Milker center in the in the one category case. So suppo suppose you have a braided one category, you can take the Milger center of the category. It's basically uh, measure the, the degeneracy of the, the, the braided uh, one category. And if the Milger center is trivial, then this is one of the equivalent definition of the modular tensor one category. And in our case, we show that the, the, the higher dimensional analog of Milger center, which is called the celebrity center of our Dreamfield center is actually trivial. So we uh, look this as a evidence somehow showing that our Dreamfield center should be an example of the, the, the modular tensor two category. So namely it is non-degenerate in some sense. And once you ha we have this mo monoidal, uh, modular tensor two category, then we can try to somehow integrate this over the surface or three manifold or even four manifold to get the topological invariant. <clears throat> okay. So now let me let me uh, start to to say some details. So uh, I'm gonna start from the monoidal one category of finite dimensional vector spaces. Uh, I denote it by the curly V. 
is also uh, the same as the one vac. And then, so what is two vac? Two, two vac is the two categories of one category of finite semi simple V module categories. So we will basically re replace the, 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 the field by this one category V and look at the module categories over this V. So you will have this two category called two vac. This is probably the most, uh, the simplest two category. And then, so to understand this category combinatorially, this category has a unique simple object, which is the free module of rank one V. And the one morphism in this category is all is is basically the isomorphic or equivalent to V itself. Okay, because any any one morphism from V to V, you, you only have to know where the ground field goes to, and the ground field go, evaluation on the ground field has to be a finite dimensional vector spaces in V. So to sum up, the end of V is just the equivalent to V, okay, as a one category. And then the two morphism in this category is just the the one morphism in V. So, I mean, I have this equivalence, the end of V is equivalent to V. So this is a very simple two category. Uh, and in general, the, the object in this category is the formal direct sum of V is a free module of rank N and the one morphisms are V module functors and two morphisms are natural transformations. So this is similar to the, the examples that as, as Michael said, it is like the algebra bimodules and bimodule maps. And the tensor product in this category is the, the lean tensor product. Okay, It's just the uh, direct generalization of the euro tensor product on the level of one categories. So the one morphism sub vector spaces over K. One that's right, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Over K. That's right. And they are finite dimensional. Right, right, right. I require everything to be finite dimensional. Then when you when you write V this fancy tensor product N or direct sum. So direct yes. sum N. Right. Okay. This is just an N copy of V. So I can just visualize forms as collection. I remember this from an old paper by I think Kapranov and um uh, Kapranov. Vilvosky. Yeah, yeah, and Vilvosky, yeah, where you just take a matrix and by a matrix. Right. And every entry is a I guess every entry is uh, it's a vector space. The vector space. Right, 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 right. And this the only tensor product in, in this example is just the naive tensor product. Right, na naive one. Right. Which means V tensor V is V. <laughs> so you can view like V is just a one dimensional vector space as a generalization of that. Okay. Uh so now let's go continue to the two vac G. So uh, given a finite group and the four co cycle, I can make this two vac G omega. So as a two category, this is just a G copies of two vac. Okay, so you have G copies of two vac as a two category, and the simple object you have you have like a, the 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 number of elements in G. For each G, in, for each small G in the big G you have a simple object called a delta G. And remember delta G should be a category, okay? So it's basically, uh, it's, a, it's a one category. And in general, the object should be the direct sum of, I mean, AG where A sub G is the G component and AG is, is an object in two vac, which is uh, like direct sums of, of one vac, okay? And the tensor product is also given by the, the multiplication in the group G and the unit object, the, the BF1 is delta one. And the, the only non-trivial thing in this uh, two vac G is the, the, the associator, non-trivial associator for the monoidal structure. And there are two levels of, of associator. The one associator is trivial. Namely, if I take like a three object, I have this delta X, delta Y, delta Z. And then I need a uh, one isomorphism between the two ways of uh, multiplying them together. And in this case, I require this to be identity, namely the one associator is actually trivial. But then, I mean, on the, on the higher level, I have the two associator, namely if I, I have like delta X, delta Y, delta Z, and delta W as four input, then I have this pentagon relation, okay? So for each for each path, I have the identity uh, one morphism. This is also the identity one morphism. 
But between these two identity one, one morphism, there are also some two isomorphism between them. Okay, the two isomorphism in this case just taking values in the in the in the non-zero complex number. So namely, for any four input x y z omega x y x y z w, I have a complex number non-zero complex number. So then you can check this actually give you a four cosec omega. So this is the only non-trivial. Uh, monoidal structure on this 2xg omega. So if omega is trivial, then you basically just have the, 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 the trivial 2xg. So is it clear for the definition of this category? Okay, so I have this monoidal two category. And then our, our goal gonna be compute the dream field center of this monoidal two category directly from the definition. So I'm not gonna give you the formal definition. I'm just gonna give you the definition. Uh, I mean, it's a special for this uh, two vac g omega. So roughly speaking, the object in the dream field center uh, consists of a uh, triple, where is uh, a is the underlying object in the original monoidal category two vac g omega, and R a uh, bar is the called the half braiding, which is a joint equivalence. Okay. And then, I mean, I mean, for one and two, this is basically a dream field center for one category. Okay, but now we are in the case of the two categories, so we require another higher level uh, invertible modification, namely a uh, two isomorphism. So if I have a, a two uh, two testing object x y, and then so this is the diagrammatic uh, presentation of this two morphism. So suppose I wanna half braiding A with X and the Y, I have two ways, right? I can first the half braiding A with X and then with Y, or I can first the multiply X, Y together and then half braiding A with X and Y. So I require, I mean, in the in the case of one category, you basically require this is the same as this. This is as the equation, okay? In the case of two category, you have freedom to choose a certain isomorphisms here. So this, isomor this two isomorphism is denoted by R, A, uh, bar x y. So this is the 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 the, the part of the data of the the object in the dream field center. So it consists of a uh, three layer of, of uh, uh, information: the underlying object, the half braiding, and the invertible modification. Okay, <clears throat> so right, so let's. So the uh, conditions that the modification have to satisfy, um, they're probably very right, 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 right. It has to just an agreed upon yes. definition of this. Right, 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 right. I'm gonna say it later. Oh, okay. Right, right. This is a this is a data, and and then I will state the axiom. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, so. So now let me take the any object I call a tilde, which given by this triple. And then I test. I take the testing object of delta G, which is a simple object in the in the in the in the monoidal category. And the the the, the half braiding tells me there should be a equivalence of categories from A tensor delta G to delta G tensor A. Okay. So I basically take the testing object X as a delta G in this case. And then so for simplicity, I will assume G is a billion. I mean, in general, it's, it's just a little bit uh, a little bit technical if G is not a billion, so, okay? So now let me take the underlying object A as delta H, and then I will take the half braiding R delta H G as the identity, because in this case, delta H tensor delta G is isomorphic to delta G tensor delta H, right? So I will take the first layer, like half braiding as the identity, and then the non-trivial, Modification will happens when you have like two testing objects, delta G and delta G prime. Okay, so I have this uh, invertible modification R H bar G G prime, which taking values in the non-zero complex numbers. Okay, and then as Josh said, it has to satisfy certain axioms, right? <clears throat> But I mean, uh, before doing that, we know that I mean, for if I fix H, I take all the G. All the testing object G in capital G, it, it, it will give a weak action of the group G on the one category delta H. And the weakness part is described by the associator RHGG prime. So that's the basic observation. So now let's see, I mean, what this RHGG prime has to satisfy certain compatibility condition. 
So now it's a huge community diagram. I mean, it looks like huge, but I mean, I already colored there, there, there are a lot of like isomorphisms. And then, so there, there I colored the two parts, uh, two types of the two isomorphisms. The one is called pi, where pi is the four cycle. okay? Four cycle means if you have four things and then you have different ways to choose to how to, how to compute the multiplication, okay? This is a two associativity, which is in red. And then there are also something in the in blue, and the blue is actually the two modification in the in the in the dream field center. Okay, so all you have to know is that there should be some equation relating all the four blue uh, modifications and all the four uh, red uh, two associate. Okay, so so the diagrammatic explanation for this diagram is that if I want Braiding A with three testing object X, Y, and Z, you should ha you have two ways, right? You can you can first uh, uh, A half braiding A with X and then with Y, Z, and then also then you can uh, group X and Y, Z together. So this is the top uh, path, and similarly you have the lower path. You should have this path is the same as this path up to the up to the four cycle. Okay, so that's basically what. I drew in this in this uh, community diagram, and then now uh, I just rewrite the diagram. You're gonna see if I take the testing, uh, I take the underlying object in the dream field center as delta h. I take the testing object g g prime and g double prime, and then as I said, there are four pi's and the four uh, two modifications, right? So they're gonna give you a re uh, equation which is this. So I have one, two, three, four. Uh, modifications and I have I combine all the four right uh, two associator into one expression called a delta h omega. Okay, so delta h omega is uh, is a is a multiplication of four cycles. They're all like four uh, right modification. Uh, no, no, four right uh, isomorphisms in this picture, and the other four are these four. Uh, two modifications, R, H, G, G prime, okay? So they have to satisfy this equation. So this equation is the associability, uh, uh, compatibility condition of this, this uh, invertible modification has to set, satisfy, okay? So let me state this in the, in, the, in, the, in the formal way. So there is some transgression map from the four cycle to the three cycle and uh, it induces some map between the cohomologies such that uh, delta h omega is the thing I said here is the ratio of four uh, co-cycles. And then now I can, I can get a fully uh, description of my, my, the object in the dream field center. As I said before, the, the object has a, a weak action of group G twisted by the, the three co-cycle tau h omega i.e. it is a module category over the monoidal one category one vac g tau h omega, okay? So you, I mean, this is simply, you have a one category uh, delta h and it has an action of g, but is twisted by a certain three cycle. okay? So in the case of vector spaces, the action could be twisted by a certain two cycle. It's called the projective re uh, representation of g, right? But now we are upgrading in the, in the uh, one category level, so it's twisted by certain uh, three cycles. So to sum up, we have a forgettable functor from the dream field center in the H component to this two rep G tau H omega, where the two rep G tau uh, H omega is the two category of right module categories over the one rep G. Right. I mean, this is just uh, forgetting all the other uh, all all the other uh, informations. Just uh, remember the the weak G action on this tau H. And the main result is that this functor is actually an equivalence of two categories. Okay. So you have the forgettable functor. Then it's just a routine to check that you have to invert uh, the the other functor in the inverse way, and then you'll show that it's actually equivalence of two categories. So that's gonna give you the main result of, of our description of the dream field center.
but this is a case where, where G is a billion. When G is not a billion, you just do a little bit of work on the conjugate class, you still can get the equivalence of two categories. Yeah, on the right-hand side of that equivalence, it was known that it was a braided two category before? No, no, this is a, just the a two category, equivalence oh. of two categories. Oh. Right, right, right. The braided structure, I'm not given here. I mean, so far, I only described the underlying two category of this, this string field set. Okay. So, but then, I mean, so you have uh, some general uh, framework to say that uh, on this string field center, you actually have the, the automatic monoidal and the braiding structure. Okay, so, so the answer is that the string field center is actually a braided monoidal two category. So maybe, yeah, later on, I'm gonna state in a simple example to see how the, 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 the braiding structure and the monoidal structure. So this is the, the description of the, the, the two category of this stream field center. And then, so let's look at a, a, a simple component called unit component. If I take the, the, the H to be one, okay. In this case, the, the commutator is G itself and the transgression co-cycle is, is, is always trivial for any for co-cycle. So namely, the, the unit component of this string field center is actually two rep G without any twisting. Okay, so in other words, you always have a two inclusion of two rep G into this string field center for any four cosec omega. And this is something called modular extension. So I'm, I'm gonna go back to this maybe at the end. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, let's come to the example. So uh, if I take the simplest the finite group Z mod two, and uh, uh, so in this case, actually the other four co-cycle is trivial. And then I have two conjugate class H equals one and H equals S. So by the main result, my dream field center is the direct sum of two copies. And each copy is isomorph is equivalent to two rep Z mod two, because in this case, all the co-cycle is trivial. And for two rep Z mod two, there are two indecomposable objects. I call it the one is unit, the other one is called T. And basically, I mean, if this is a one rep G, the one correspond to the, the, the trivial representation and the T correspond to the regular representation. I mean, because this is the, 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 the category, so there is no sign representation because I'm working in the semi-simple case. So T is, T is basically the regular representation of one whack Z mod two. Also saying that in this in this in this categorical set, uh, setting, there is no there is no Sign representation. you don't see objects right. for reduced representations use, but you see object for the regular representation, or you see or objects for orbits of the country or for or kind of right. You only have the orbits of the country. Yes, yes, yes. So but because 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 I mean you can only leave the, the in some sense the, the 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 integers into the category naturally. So this is sort of kind of there are some kind of growth and deep map into into Burnside dream or. Uh, oh, I guess I I need to, I'd have to know more, but. No, I don't know. Okay, sorry. Let, yeah, let me first say the diagrammatic thing. <laughs> okay, so this is the underlying two category. So I have two components, right? So each component is equivalent to two two rep z mod two, and for each two rep two rep z mod two, I have two indecomposable object one and the t, and the other copy is one sub s t sub s, where the subscript s denote the the grading. So, so, so let me just sorry, can I interrupt again? So so two sure. rep z two it's a monoidal two category. Sorry, sorry, it's a two category with two objects. It's a, uh, with two, two indecomposable two. objects. So yes, two indecomposable. And so this category has a graph computation in the plane where you'll have some pictures and the regions are going to be labeled by i and t. Uh, that's right. That's right. And this is easy to draw. Okay. Yeah. I'm just asking. Right? It's easy to draw. Uh. You mean you want you want to label the the region by the object and the line by the one? Yeah, when, when you have a two category, you can use the yes, yes. kind of plane interpretation. That's that's um, Poincaré dual to yes, the yes. kind of standard. Yeah, one. that's basically the Poincaré dual of this query rep uh, representation, right? 
But you have more structure, right? You'll have you have two morphisms. Yes. You'll, you'll have so first of all, you have regions of the plane labeled by one and t, and you yes. have to say how you label lines by one yes, more, by, by one by morphism. morphisms. Yes. Uh -huh. And then you'll have generating two morphisms. You'll have to yes, say what yes. those are and what the defining relations are. Yes, and yes. And then you want to do uh, some integration of this decorate, uh, decorated surface. And then, but you're saying it's not only for on the plane, but you can do this on any surface, on any oriented surface. You can do such part, such diagrams on any oriented. Right, you should surface. be able to do that. Right, once you have the triangulation of the surface or mm -hmm. or some. Yes. But when you have, but the center is kind of something more complicated. It's in three D center of two. Right, 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 right. In physics, it's called in the box. Right, is 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 in the three D. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, so the underlying two category. I mean, this quiver presentation is the two wrap Z more two. It has two simple objects, the one and the T, and I and mean, th this is object. So if I look at the endomorphism, one category of this identity, I recover the rep G, which is rep Z more two. And if I take the endomorphism of this regular representation, I got one whack G, okay? And then, but you also have the home space between one and T, which is one whack in this case, and uh, also the other way. So this category is a self due in some sense, because, okay? And then you have the other copy for the, for the other grading H equal S. So that's the underlying two category, okay? And then the monoidal structure is actually uh, pretty simple. So first of all, the grading will respect to the grading in G, namely if I have IS, tensor IS, I get I. So this is the unit, in some sense is the unit in this component and if I tensor the, those two units, I got the unit in the, in the true unit component. And then the, the second uh, second set of isomorphisms is the one, one S tensor T is actually T S. So one, one S is the unit in this, it's not unit, okay. It's the, 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 the simple object in this component. And then if I tensor with the regular rep representation, I will get back the re regular representation in this component, okay. And then the only non-trivial uh, relation will be T tensor T. As I said, T in this case is actually the regular representation of G. So it's two dimensional. And then T tensor T will be two copies of T. Okay. So very naively, very naively, right? it looks like the relation on the Zogit by module of A1 of the Zogit by you module. You mean T tensor T is T plus T. Yeah, yeah, but of course, this is as a, this is for categories. This is not for objects. For okay, yeah. yeah. But maybe if you kind of have this exterior tensor product in some kind of three D, then maybe you can take a different cross section and see some version, some modification, or special case of a Zergian category in the cross section. If your kind of exterior tensor product corresponds to kind of maybe some additional dimension, maybe in three D, and maybe you can recover. Um, some modification, special case or deformation of the Zergian category in some planar cross section of the 3D picture. But this is just uh -huh. very naive, very speculative. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, let me continue. So uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the monoidal structure of this category. Okay, so uh, and then uh, the braiding structure will take uh, yeah, let me just uh, say the braiding on the level of one cat uh, on the level of one morphisms. If I have x, y, and y x, so it's gonna be a functor from x tensor y to y tensor x, right? Remember, both x and y are actually one category. So uh, the half braiding will not change the second factor, namely always y will goes to y, and the first factor will up to a twist of rho g, where g is depends on the the basically the grading of the y. This is a simple generalization of the, the half braiding in the, in the case of one category. And then you have to know the only non-trivial case where uh, rho g, the, the twisting is non-trivial is that when x is t or ts and the y is uh, in the grading of s, okay? So all the thing I wanna say is, I mean, here basically the theory is completely parallel to the one category case, the only, Non-trivial, I mean, the different thing from the one category is actually this regular representation T. Okay, so in the case, in the case of the, 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 
the representation of Z mod two, you have two simple modules, which one of them is the trivial module, the other one is the sign representation, right? But in this, in the in the, in the higher category level, the sign representation, I mean, in this case, is not easy to be categorified in some sense. I mean, maybe for the sign representation is fine because you can take the derived category, right? But suppose you have the your your eigenvalue is some fraction numbers, then it's very hard to to guide the simple simple representations. But but at what at, at what step do you want to categorify? So so right now you have so so, so you have a two category with two objects, one and t. Yes. So first of all, there's some some set of uh, kind of generators and relations for this two category. Yes. That kind of not not on this page, but it's kind of can be written down. It's probably not too hard. Yes. And in addition to that, you have some kind of exterior tensor product. Yes. Of of one of tensor product of I guess objects objects. Yes. But you, yes. Your, of course, your plane is already occupied by kind of homes between one and t, and from t to t. Yes. So you, you kind of. I mean, you could go. I think I suppose you can go to 3D with this exterior tensor product, but it's a kind of it's additional direction, and maybe uh -huh. you want some additional direction for the Dreamfield double. Again, I'm just kind of I'm really know very little about this. I'm just kind of trying to understand what's going on. But I guess if, at some point maybe I can ask you later about the just graphical calculus for one for I and T, and, mm -hmm. and later how to kind of see the Zogin, say, say some version of the Zogin category from in this relation. Okay, okay, sure. This is sure, even sure. before Dreamfield double. This is even before Dreamfield double. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. You're uh, you, you are just uh, curious about this uh, two two rep Z mod two, right? Yeah, yeah, and possible kind of po possible connection to some version of Zagier category. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I understand your 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 question and concern, but I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, the second example uh, is uh, a simple example. I said the center could detect the focal cycle. So in physics, uh, at least the one of my collaborators says it's actually very hard to detect the focal cycle. Okay, but then you can try to uh, use the Dreamfield center to detect the focal cycle. So mathematically, there means uh, you have this simple example of G is Z mod two plus Z mod two, and then in this case, H upper four is non-trivial. And then I take omega zero and omega one. There are two different co four co cycles. And then I compute their Dreamfield center, and we can show that their two Dreamfield centers are actually not equivalent as two categories. So by this, we we, we can imply that the, the 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 original two monoidal two category they are not uh, the same. Okay. So this is the thing that the somehow. You can use the Dreamfield center to detect the the the, the, the original two vec g omega to detect the focal cycle. This is one of the applications. Okay. So let now let me quickly go through the the last part of the property of this uh, this Dreamfield center. As I said before, so so one of our motivations is try to study the 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 so the toy model of modular tensor two categories. So one of the definition of mono, modular Tensor one category is to show that is the Milgar center is actually trivial. So now we study the higher analog of the Milgar center, which is called the elliptic center. So by definition, so suppose I start with a braided monoidal two category C and the elliptic center by definition is the following two category. So as before, the object is defined by a pair where A is the underlying object in the braided monoidal two category C and a VA is some invertible modification between the double braiding of A and X and the trivial identity from AX to itself. Okay. So I mean in the in the in the one category case, I mean the Milgar center requires this two morphism just to be equation. So now you you you're go upper level once, so you'll have one more freedom to 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 keep these two isomorphisms. And this is called a VAX. And apparently VAX has to satisfy certain compatibility condition, but I'm not gonna stay here. So at the end, so you can trust me, the monoidal braiding and the syllabic structure defines the syllabic center as a syllabic two category. And this is so-called the E3 algebra in the factorization homology. 
So you, because the braided uh, two, monoidal two categories E2 algebra. So you take the center, you should get the E3 algebra. Okay, this is the philosophy. And uh, our the other uh, result is that the significant center of the dream field center is actually trivial. Okay. This is also, I mean, the uh, the lower dimensional analog also holds, right? If you start from the monoidal one category, you take the dream field center, and then the Milgar center of this dream field center is actually trivial because the, 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 the dream field center of any monoidal category is actually modular in some sense. So this is just the higher dimensional analog of those results. So by this, we expect that somehow the, 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 this dream field center should be a, an example of the modular tensor two category. And the, the concrete uh, explanation of this result is that, so the, the celibate center, because it's, is equivalent to two vect, which means the celibate center only has one simple object, has to be the unit. So the underlying object is unit and all the, the invertible modification has to be trivial. And in the plain words, it says if any, any composable object, A such that it double braiding with any other object is trivial, then A has to be the vacuum. That's the, right, that's the, the, the somehow explanation of this result. And the, that says somehow this 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 braided monoidal category is non-degenerate in some sense, right? Because only the vacuum, I mean the double braiding of the vacuum with any other object is trivial. So we expect the Dreamfield Center is a modular tensor two category. And finally, let me give you the the the, the conjecture of the modular extension. So as I said before, the two rep D is a unique component of the dream field center. And then you can similarly define, it's actually a monoidal subcategory of the dream field center because it is a unique component. And then you can similarly define the relative significant center of this monoidal subcategory in the, uh, in the dream field center. And this, you can show that the, this relative significant center is actually equivalent to two rep G and then by definition, a, a modular extension of two rep D is to look at a modular tensor category C with a monoidal fully uh, embedding from two rep D to C. Okay, this is a definition of a modular extension. So basically you look at the, the, the embedding of two rep D into a bigger category and you require the, the bigger category is modular. This is called a modular extension. And the modular extension is called a minimum if the relative celibate center of two rep G in the bigger uh, modular tensor category is actually two rep G. So this is exactly the case, uh, I mean, in our, in our case. So by this definition, our uh, dream field center is actually a minimum uh, modular extension of two rep G, basically by definition, okay? And then we have the following conjecture motivated by the, the, the topological order. It says the we can classify all the equivalent classes of minimal modular extension of two rep D, and the conjecture says it is classified by the the, the four cycle. Okay, namely all the modular minimal modular extension of two rep D coming from the dream field center of two vec G omega for all possible omega. Yeah, that's the that's the main conjecture on the modular extension. Uh, yeah, I think I want to stop here. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Good, thank you. Thanks. I'm going to stop the recording and then we could ask questions. Sure, sure, sure.